Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. I welcome everybody in the name of the Lord. Um, like Andy said during class, it's exciting to be out and look, and it's nice and sunny. And well, it's still cloudy, but at least it's not pouring down rain and everything like last week. It's always fun to be up top running the video, and you're hearing the the rain hit the roof a lot closer than you guys do, and we're going, well, this is kind of loud. But anyway. All right. Um, well, we'll start this morning's services. Uh, we're going to start with uh, hymn 37, We Gather Together. And if we'll stand for that. Please. <laughs> Our dear Heavenly Father, we thank thee for this opportunity that we have to meet together and worship thee and fill thy love and thy spirit. And we ask thee to bless those that aren't here, that they may be able to fill thy love and thy, thy comfort and, and that we will be able to see them again soon. And we again thank thee for all that thou hast given to us. And we say these things in the name of thy Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. <laughs> All right, Brother Marcus, come forward, please. Now, I'm going to read out of the uh, Doctrine and Covenants, section 28, verse uh, 1a. It says, listen to the voice of Jesus Christ, your Redeemer, the great I Am, whose arm of mercy hath atoned for your sins, who will gather his people even as a hen gathereth her chickens under her wings, even as many as will hear him, will hear to my voice, and humble themselves before me and call upon in mighty prayer. I'll pray over the offertory. And dear Heavenly Father, we again thank thee for this time, and we please ask a blessing on this, the funds that we receive, that will to be used in a manner pleasing unto thee. And we say these things in the name of thy Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. <laughs>
All right. Well, we're going to do a little bit different today. Um, so I hope you get your, uh, your voices warmed up at that first hymn. We're going to do um, a hymn sing, and um, Roland has prepared this, so I am going to turn this over to him, and we'll go from there. As a little boy in Sioux Falls, South Dakota, Vernon and I can relate to being kind of by yourself out in the Dakotas, church-wise. Sioux Falls, we had, I believe, the largest branch in the state all of all three branches that were in the state at the time. And I think we had 40 people coming. To me, was going to district conference there would be him sing, and it was a wonderful time. And then we had a missionary program that was there in our branch. And I found out that you didn't have to just have a him sing only at district conference. And that was exciting. And then we moved to Yankton, where there were two or three little old ladies that met in the community. And that was it. And, of course, I was the youngest of four boys, so there was mom, dad, and, the six, and us four boys. That brought in six. And another family moved down from Sioux Falls to Yankton. That was the same size. So we had a total of about 15 people. And dad was, he was the only priesthood member. You'd tell them they hadn't had any priesthood members. And uh, while he was there, he would preach six Sundays in a row. And seventh Sunday, Lee Abramson would come by. And, and we looked forward to when Lee Abramson was going to be there because we'd heard Dad preparing his sermon every day for the week leading up to the sermon. <laughs> and so by the, the time Lee came around, not only did we have somebody besides Dad, but it was also somebody we hadn't heard the sermon prep for the week ahead of time. But again, it was the hymn sing. The chance to come together. Um, let's turn to hymn number 11. I'm going to read a scripture. I'm going to use some scriptures intermittently with this. Actually, I think this is the one Marcus may have. The no, wait, wait a minute. You've got one elsewhere. I've got Psalms. Make a joyful noise unto the Lord, all ye lands. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before his presence with singing. Know ye that the Lord, he is God. It is he that hath made us, and not we ourselves. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter, his, enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him and bless his name. For the Lord is good and his mercy is everlasting and his truth endureth to all generations. Hymn number 11.
Sometimes we, we praise, sometimes we worship. And what's the difference between praise and worship? I looked up in the dictionaries I found where I just really didn't feel like they met at all. Worship, the feeling or expression of reverence and adoration for God. That's the noun. Verb is show reverence and adoration to God. Honor with righteous rites, religious rites. When we do the communion, we kneel. That's one form of worship and honor and praise. In the process of kneeling before our God. In the ancient times, kneeling before a king literally was recognizing that he had the power to literally chop your head off if he didn't like the way you came in front of him. That was kneeling in reverence before him, giving him honor. And it, I don't believe God's here to chop our heads off. That's not what I'm saying. But we acknowledge that he has more power over us. And to kneel before him is to recognize that we are sinners. We sin before God. And we need his help to overcome that sin. We are not worthy of the blessing that he has given us. We are not worthy of the sacrifice of his son. But Jesus Christ and the Father, in their magnificent power, you've heard me talk a lot lately about a baby because you know what? A baby is one of the most precious things in my life right now. A baby's precious. And the miracle that God could make that baby. We didn't do it in and of ourselves. God did it. And to think that we are worthy to be able to say, look, I'm good enough, I can just come into his presence. No. We are only worthy because he allows us to, and he provided a way to come back. Now, how are some other things we do to do praise? We bow, we acknowledge when we pray. In times we lift our hands in praise. And at times we sing. And as one of the hymns we're going to go to, we shout honors and glory to our God. 
because God is worthy and honored. And he's worthy to be praised for what he's done. He's worthy for us to give thanksgiving for what he has done. And he is worthy of honor and worthy to be glorified. And even in the process of glorifying God, when I sing a hymn of praise, and I mean I really let it rip sometimes, but my soul is fed by the very process of worshiping my God. Even in trying to bring honor to his name, I am blessed. I can't outgive him. He gives more than I possibly can give to him. Shall we turn to hymn number 219? And Marcus, I believe this one gives us a scripture that, you want to come up here real quick and read that one? Oh, you got a mic? Okay. This is Hebrews 6, 1 through 3. Yeah. Therefore, not leaving the principles of the doctrine of Christ, let us go on unto perfection, not laying, laying again the foundation of repentance from dead works and of faith to on for, toward God, of the doctrine of baptiz, uh, Baptist, of laying on their hands and of the resurrection of the dead and of internal ju judgment. And we will go on unto per if God permit. Number 
since the precious angel message came to me. Now well, that had always been one of my personal favorites, hymns. And then I went to the, kind of was in questioning, and I went to our first general assembly. And I heard the angels sing that song. And it became very precious to me. I found the glorious gospel. And you know, sometimes I really like to let it out and rip. And I just, some of these hymns, they just, they have to be sung that way. But there's also times when the spirit is tender too. Times when everything in the world is wanting to just scream and glorify God. There's times that tenderness is the most important thing. And the spirit can be both ways. That the trial of your faith being much more precious than that of gold, that perish, uh, though it be tried with fire, might be found unto the praise and honor and glory to the appearing of Jesus Christ, whom having not seen, ye love, and whom thou, though thou, now ye see him not, yet believing, ye rejoice with joy unspeakable and full of glory. Receive the object of your faith, even the salvation of your souls. Hymn number 345.
last night I had a chance to, I went to a concert, I had a chance to talk with Carol Beam. I don't know if any of you know her. Randy Beam, Tom Beam, they came here with the Gospel Park. Carol was their sister-in-law, or is their sister-in-law. Well, I guess now I, Randy and Tom, uh, but Tom was her husband. And Carol's job was she was, had worked up through the ranks and had become director of nursing for hospice of Kansas City, Kansas City Hospice. And uh, she and I had had a chance to talk about the third verse of that hymn. I will love thee in life, I will love thee in death. And praise thee as long as thou lendest me breath. And say when the death dew lies cold my, on my brow, if ever I love thee, my Jesus tis now. And both she and I, having been present when multiple people died, saw that peace that comes as they're dying to be able to say, if ever I love thee, my Jesus, tis now. It is a peaceful thing. Death is not something to be feared. I don't want to, I got a grandbaby, I got two little grandsons. I don't want to go right now. But there's things worse than death. My Jesus, when the death dew lies cold on the brow, if ever I love thee, my Jesus, tis now. We can praise and honor Jesus through so many ways. Um, the next one we're going to sing is the handout that I gave you, or I had gave you. I think y'all got a copy of it. I'd like to sing this through twice. Just to me, it, it's special when we sing it that way.
wherefore redemption cometh in and through the holy Messiah, for he is full of grace and truth. Behold, he offereth himself a sacrifice for sin to answer the law unto all those who have a broken heart and a contrite spirit. And to unto none else can the ends of the law be answered. Wherefore, how great the importance to make these things known to, unto the inhabitants of the earth, that they may know that there is no flesh that can dwell in the presence of God, save it be through the merits and mercy and the grace of the Holy Messiah, who layeth down his life according to the flesh, and taketh it up again by the power of the Spirit, that he may bring to pass the resurrection of the dead, being the first that should rise. Wherefore he is the first fruits unto God, inasmuch as he shall make intercession for all the children of men. And they that believe in him shall be saved. And because of the intercession for all, all men come unto God. Wherefore they stand in the presence of him to be judged according to the truth and the holiness which is in him. Wherefore the ends of the law, which the Holy One hath given unto the inflicting of punishment, which is affixed, which punishment is affixed in, in opposition to the happiness which is affixed to the answer, answer the ends of atonement. Shall we turn to hymn number um, three? Wait a minute, hymn number 18. And I want us to think about the spirit that was with us when we sang that last one. And I want us to start with that tenderness for the first two verses. And then, yes, this is also a hymn of strong praise. But it's also a hymn of tender praise. Shall we start? Tender. <laughs>
that every tongue should and that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is the Lord to the glory of God the Father. Wherefore, my beloved, as ye have always been obeyed, and not as my presence only obey, but in my presence only, but now I got that off, I'm sorry. Wherefore God hath highly exalted him, and given him a name which is above all every name. That is the name of Jesus. At the name of Jesus, every knee should bow. Of things in heaven and things in earth and things under the earth. And every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is the Lord. To the glory of God the Father. From the book of Alma. Blessed be the name of our God. Let us sing to his praise. Yea, let us give thanks to his holy name. For he doth work righteousness forever. Shall we turn to hymn number 20? You gotta fill your lungs. Stand up so we can fill our lungs. And stay up. Um, oh, we're getting feedback now. Um, we have one last hymn, and I think we're going to close with this one. And I don't know, you've got benediction arranged, okay? And it's one I think we all want to stand for. Hymn number two twenty one. And I want to talk just briefly about one of the things I did while I was incarcerated. I 
took the time to go through and diagram the grammatical writings of the hymns, some of them. And if we look at this, it says, we'll sing and we'll shout with the armies of heaven. But if you grammatically go back and what that says is, this is, we're just describing what we're going to do. But the singing and shouting refers to Hosanna, Hosanna. Now some people have tried to teach kids to shout that shouting right there. Actually what it says, we'll sing, we'll shout, and what we're going to sing and shout is, Hosanna, Hosanna, to God and the Lamb, and glory to, let glory to them in the highest be given, henceforth and forever, amen and amen. this day in prayer giving thee thanks and praise for the blessings that's been here with us today help us to continue in thy spirit that we'll be able to shout with the angels of heaven that we will that we will give thee the honor and the glory forever and forever. Please be with us as we depart this building that we'll be able to travel home in peace and safety. We're thankful again, Father, for everything that thou has given to us. And we say these things in Jesus' holy name. Amen. Amen.